Welcome back everyone to another episode in my leveling let's play series here in the beautiful Stone Talon Mountains. Of course I'm picking up where I left off in the last episode. I'm going down here underneath Kromgar Fortress which is a nice fortress the Horde has established on top of the mountain and we're going underneath here in the deep reaches to talk with Sergeant Dontrag and see what exactly he needs us to do for him here. So let's see what he has for us. But first we'll collect this 3200 experience and now here comes the many quests they have to offer. So the first quest is to rescue 10 frightened peons, collect 10 spare parts, and defeat 12 of the raging elementals here. Now you can tell that this mine looks pretty abandoned. Maybe it was productive back in its heyday but today it looks like a mess. And that explains why all the spare parts are kind of scattered throughout random places in the mine. And of course we have all of the frightened peons just kind of hiding behind little barrels and stuff. I'm not sure what they're hiding from in this area because all the enraged elementals are kind of on the other side of the map over here. So let's head over there and fight some of them now. now I'm not exactly sure why these elementals are kind of pissed off but as a shaman you'd you would think I'd have some kind of way to communicate with the elementals. See what's on their mind. What exactly rubbed them the wrong way. But I have the ability called landslide as you see there. It triggers when I use my rock biter ability and it grants me about 8% agility. Which for a shaman it will grant me some nice attack power increase. Help me take down these mobs much quicker. But I also have an ability called wind fury. Which is an awesome passive ability. It used to be something you had to cast on your weapon. It was like a 60 minute timer before you needed to put it back on. But nowadays it's a passive ability. And what it does is it grants you an extra attack with your weapons. Which it may not sound too powerful. But it's actually pretty useful. And I would say it's pretty powerful because it's passive. You know you're not pushing any extra buttons. It just happens automatically. You'll notice like you see damn like I just took half their health with one hit. That's because of wind fury. Now I said it's a powerful ability because I really think an extra strike just really comes in handy. Because you're not really expecting it and it does have quite of a good chance of happening. So after completing these quests I hit level 25 and now hanging around 22% with this quest to finish up before I can head back up to Kromgar Fortress. Now one thing I have to say about that Wind Fury ability, I remember back in the day, I think it was from like the Western Plague Lands or something, but there was this one trinket that grants you like an extra, you know, an extra attack much like Wind Fury. And of course I didn't think it was much at first, but as I saw it and experimented with it, it was quite powerful. And it was cool how they had like unique items like that, like the relics and such. That just grant you these kind of specialized abilities, you know, that could be useful for everyone. You know, you don't really see that too much in today's game, but it'd be pretty cool to see some kind of stuff implemented like that. That have some kind of unique effect on the gameplay without being, you know, too crazy to the point where it's broken, right? Because then that's the point where it'll get exposed and overused. So we're heading up here, seek and destroy. That's 10,000 experience. From the quest where I have to kill 20 alliance members. It's a daily quest that you can do every day because it's a daily of course. So I just went ahead and finished that because why not it's an extra 10,000 experience right? So I was just giving her the crate of spare parts and that's for a good reason because we're going to use them to shoot down 15 gnomish flying machines to kill 25 gnomes. Now this is a pretty cool quest. As you see they're just flying around in their homemade ships and we have to shoot them down with the can. Now one thing that's messed up about this quest I'm pretty sure you've noticed is that once you shoot down the plane you know it goes down but then you see the two people they jumped out with their parachutes and then you have to shoot the actual person with a missile projectile. Now I don't know but that sounds kind of crazy can you imagine a missile hitting you? you as a person not your plane like the missile literally hits you that's pretty crazy I don't know how painful that would be instant death I don't know but it sounds pretty crazy 
So the completion of this quest puts me up to 88% of the way to the next level. I'm also now a legionnaire of the Kromgar army, okay. which is pretty cool. That unlocks a bunch of stuff for us to buy here at the Quartermaster. Strength and honor. So now I'm headed deeper into Stone Talon Mountains, getting attacked by these thunder lizards. Pretty weird combination. But on the way, we're heading over to see the witch doctor, Genzil, but on the way here, I met this Talon Grip guy who offers me a quest to kill a bunch of spiders, right? Everyone's complete nightmare, or at least most people, you know, I know a lot of people who have arachnophobia. I mean, look at these things. They're pretty intimidating to look at. Now imagine walking here in real life. Like imagine this place was a real place on earth, exactly like this, with the same size spiders with the same abilities and such. I mean, that'd be pretty terrifying to see. I mean, I've seen some scary stuff like in Ashenvale. It was these same exact kind of spiders, except they were stealth. Like they're just hiding right there next to a tree. Invisible, you walk by, you get attacked by these spiders. Imagine how truly terrifying that would be to see that as a person with arachnophobia, you would freak out. So here's this rare elite, Iris the Widow. You know, pretty unique skin there. And it gives you a lot of experience, 8,000. You know, it could almost justify as a quest. I mean, that's a lot of experience for just killing one mob that doesn't really give you too much trouble. And then here is the queen that runs this place. A gigantic Godzilla-sized spider. Now, that'd be truly terrifying to see as well. This whole place pretty much like, nope, not going there, right? Imagine fighting this thing with in real life. Like, would you have hammers or just a gun? You would fist fight this spider to death. I don't know, that'd be a pretty weird encounter too. It'd be an awkward fight to fight with a gigantic spider like that. What do you need? Anyways, it gives me 10,000 experience, which puts me up around 31% to the next level. And I've noticed as leveling here, I read something in how the leveling process was slowed down a little bit. But honestly, throughout the series, I haven't really noticed much of a difference. It's still going at a pretty good pace and everything. Maybe it's because of the heirloom gear. Anyways, that's going to be all for this video today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And stay tuned for more.